Hey, and welcome back. Um, we're at a good point now in this uh, application development and that all we need to do to really get a real good sense of a game is to allow our bricks to be destroyed. So far what we have is, if I press play here, we have our bricks and it bounces off and is acting weird because actually these aren't bricks. They're acting the same way as a bunch of paddles here. Okay, so we're going to change that in this video. If you have any questions about what we're doing so far, you know, don't don't hesitate to go back in the previous video, look over that, and then it should set you straight. So right now, uh, as I look through our code, I see here that I have draw bricks. Now, with every rectangle, I'm going to go here, and I'm going to find myself a rectangle here. I'm going to draw it out like this. When I click on this rectangle, you'll see down here, there is, hold up, let me go to the properties. Down here is a tag. Now, a tag is a really good way to kind of identify something outside of the name itself. We're going to use those tags in our back end here when we create our bricks. So what we want to do here is in this properties here for the brick height and all this other stuff, we're going to add another property to the brick um, before we add it to the main window. So I'm going to go down here and I'm going to say brick dot tag. And that tag is going to equal brick, all lowercase. Perfect. So now I create this brick and then I'm setting up all the parameters to this brick and I'm giving it a tag. Um, now we need to go down into our collision detection. So here's our hit test, my hit test results right here. This is where we're going to do our, our test as far as whether it hit a regular rectangle or whether it hit something like a brick. And we're going to do that right after this if statement here. So after this hit statement, we're going to want to go ahead and put another if statement. And it's going to be inside of this if statement. So I'm going to get, make some room here, make some room here. And then right inside of here, I'm going to type the following. If C type, and I'll explain it when we're done. Result. That visual hit, comma, rectangle. Then I'm going to go outside of this. Now, this right here is checking, not a call type, a C type. There we go. This C type here is checking to see if it's a rectangle, but it's also going to check that rectangle once it returns it, if it is a rectangle. We're going to check to see if there's a tag on that rectangle called brick. The only thing here is that we need to get rid of this. That was by mistake. And so after the then, I'm going to hit enter to close that if right here. Now, inside of here, I'm going to call the main canvas. And I'm going to check child because this right here indicates that I hit something that has a brick. So I want to remove whatever that is. That remove. And I'm going to call the same thing. Is this right here because this equals the brick C type open close result dot visual hit rectangle perfect so this says if it is a rectangle and uh, if it is the type of a rectangle and the tag is brick, then go ahead and remove that item, whatever you hit. Um, also, what we're going to have to do is when it hits a brick, we want the speed to reverse. We're going to say ball speed in the y axis. And we're going to make that, we're going to multiply that by negative 1. So whatever that speed is, is going to go ahead and reverse that. But if it doesn't hit, this right here, 
let's say if it doesn't hit the brick, but it hits a rectangle, then that means it hit the paddle. So we want this to be, say, else right there. And then down here, we're going to go ahead and end if. So now let's check and see if it works. And there we have it. Now we have it. Every time it hits a brick, it bounces off and it reverses its speed. And now it doesn't go crazy, you know, when it hits the bricks, it simply bounces off. Now what I need to do here is actually when it goes off the screen, it pops up here at zero, zero. It always resets there. And what I'm probably going to want this to do is reset somewhere in the middle. So that way, when it resets, it doesn't reset, it's destroying the balls. So let's go up here. We check the collision here. We look at the wall bottom here, if it hits the bottom. And we translate that back to zero, zero. But what we want to do is we want to translate it to the height In canvas dot height and then we're gonna divide that by two and then we'll do the same thing with the width so it's somewhat in the center now, again, we're, we're doing a test here. We have to see where this ball comes out. And if it doesn't turn out to be the same, we can change this number around. So I'm going to run this again. I'm going to let the ball drop. And it, that's pretty good. So it always starts there. All right, so the only other thing we can do here is maybe add some scoring or something like that. Like if it, if this ball goes down here a certain amount of times, let's say if this ball goes down uh, three times, then the game is over. We'll do that in the next video. But for right now, if we look here, we got ourselves a game going on. We got this paddle moving around. It destroys the balls. And we can direct the ball depending on where we hit it on the pad. If you got this far, congratulations. You just now programmed your first game in WPF. And I'm busy playing it. All right, so I'll see you guys next time. Make sure you subscribe. Make sure you share this video. And if you have any questions, leave them in the comment section below. See ya.